When it comes to Sony, there has been a concerted effort by their PlayStation Studios to push for more accessibility in their titles, such as The Last of Us 2, Spider-Man, and Ratchet & Clank. Well, now that Horizon Forbidden West is on the horizon, quote-unquote, does it meet that standard? Let's find out. Here is my accessibility review of Horizon Forbidden West. Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and if you're wondering how I'm able to play video games if I'm blind, if you take a look at the video here and the video is not there, click the link in the description down below to see exactly what I see when I'm playing video games. Also, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can see more of my videos, and if you like this video at the end, click the like button. Now, before I begin, I do have to disclose that yes, I did work on Horizon Forbidden West as an accessibility tester and consultant, but that has no effect on my review of the final game. Sony did provide an early review copy for me, but I should say I was paid to work on the game. I was not paid to review the game. Hopefully that makes sense. Before we start on Horizon Forbidden West, we have to touch on Horizon Zero Dawn first in regards to its accessibility. The options there were very, very bare bones at the time. No remapping, no subtitle options other than to turn on or off. There was quest and waypoint pathfinding where it would display a waypoint on the path you're supposed to take to get you to your destination, but that's about it that really stood out. Sadly, even with all the updates we received on the PC port and the PS5 update, there wasn't much that was added later post-launch in Zero Dawn. So when the sequel Forbidden West was announced, it did spark hope in the accessibility community, hoping that we get to pick up Aloy's bow and save the world together. Now, did Gorilla succeed in that? Well, sort of. In comparison to Zero Dawn, Forbidden West options dwarf the original by a long shot. There is full remapping, including a few control schemes that you can even copy and make your own custom remap based on those schemes. You can slow down your focus and your concentration when aiming your bow to even slower than before. There are even some upgrades later on that it slows down even further. You can auto heal where you will also auto consume health packs when your health gets lower than 50%. It'll even fully heal you after a short time after combat. You can auto shield wing, which is a new exploration mechanic where similar to Zelda Breath of the Wild, you eventually get access to a glider that will allow Aloy to glide down cliffs and high areas. So the auto shield wing will deploy that for you. There is actually a co-pilot mode, which honestly was a huge surprise because this is the first time Sony has implemented a mode similar to how Xbox does it, where you can be able to connect a second controller to the console and two controllers can act as one controller. At first I thought this was awesome Awesome for those with motor disabilities, but after finding out that it was a sightless blind consultant, not me, actually someone else, that suggested the feature, it made sense because those blind players who need sighted assistance can now play along with them instead of just watching them. And honestly, that is really, really cool. Also, another thing that's really cool is you can turn on climbing annotations, which had a has a bright yellow overlay on areas where Aloy can climb. They definitely helped in knowing where and what I could actually climb. While sometimes even even in brightly lit areas where those potentially could be hard to see, for the most part, the contrast and brightness of the annotations were really easy to spot. Another great option is actually you can also be able to adjust finally the subtitle size and background, as well as you can force mono audio for those deaf and hard of hearing players that need it. So on the surface, this game would seem miles ahead of its predecessor in regards to accessibility, right? Well, like I said, sort of. The problem with this amount of options is in regards to some of its implementation. Because on the surface, at least for blind, low vision, and deaf and hard of hearing users, the game pretty much plays the exact same as Zero Dawn did, and in some cases, actually even worse. There are some elements that actually were lowered in size in comparison to the first one, as you can see here with the health bar, the items menu in the bottom left, and also the XP bar. And the in-game menus also suffer from low contrast, in some cases even lower font size in some of its headings. There's also no way to adjust that to make the HUD or text larger. Also, the hope of there being a proper auto aim only pertains to Aloy's focus mode, where it will lock onto a target to scan them. But there is no auto aim from what I can tell for use of Aloy's bow, which is the main combat mechanic in both Zero Dawn and Forbidden West. 
The slower concentration where it will slow down the game to about 50% to help you aim more precisely only lasts a few seconds and I found myself struggling to find a target before the concentration depletes. Again, there are ways to upgrade to slow down concentration and to make it last longer, but locking down those features to upgrades defeats the purpose of using those for accessibility purposes in the first place. In addition, there are still features missing for blind and low vision users, such as menu narration and including navigational assistance. Another issue for implementation was for deaf and hard of hearing. While the subtitles, yes, did have an extra large text setting, the background is only semi-transparent and not opaque. So even with the large text, it can be difficult to see if the subtitles are up against a bright background. Also as well, the subtitles are actually pushed to the absolute bottom of the screen. The reason why this is an issue is because when you're in combat and subtitles pop up, because it's not in your periphery, some deaf and hard of hearing users may not know what subtitles are being displayed. There's also no captions for environmental dialogue when you are in populated areas, just main dialogue only. There's also no visual indicators of sound in the game, so if an enemy attacks you from off screen, you won't be able to see if it uh, see it until it happens. The game does use different color lights to indicate if a machine is idle with blue light, yellow if they are alert, and red if they have found you and are hunting you. And this can be an issue for those who are colorblind as well, but they also negate that by having a small icon below the compass, letting you know if an enemy nearby is alerted to your presence with a question mark, and it does change to an exclamation mark when alerted. But like I mentioned, there is no indication as to where the machine will attack from if they are off screen. Normally this is accomplished in other games with a compass ring in the center with arrows indicating where an enemy is coming from, but that's not in and for Forbidden West. However, that being said, there has been a lot of improvements for motor disabilities in this game compared to Zero Dawn. The ability to remap and also remove uh, some need to push down on the thumbsticks does help. Plus the ability to auto sprint on foot or on a mount. The co-pilot feature I mentioned earlier also is a big push forward to PlayStation accessibility in general. Having the ability to be able to also change holds to toggles, changing sensitivity on thumbsticks both for X and Y axis has improved over the original. The only thing that still prevents this from working really, really well is that still there is no hardware solution from Sony like an adaptive controller, and for those who cannot use the DualShock or DualSense controllers, they would have to wait until this launches on PC so they can use alternative inputs. Otherwise, those same players still won't be able to play this game. All in all, my thoughts are kind of this. Is this an improvement over Zero Dawn? Yes, there are things that they took several steps back on, but it is still an improvement. Where I think the accessibility fails is in what is seen as early design choices to have this play exactly like the original, which wasn't accessible in the first place. I see why, because it makes the gameplay familiar to those who played Zero Dawn previously. The problem with that is because they went with those design decisions early on, the accessibility added later doesn't help in the way that it should. Granted, this is the last of the large AAA games in PlayStation Studios' library that was in early development while The Last of Us 2 was in development, so Sony's push for accessibility in their studios wasn't as strong then as it is now. This fell actually kind of like right in the middle of that production cycle, and also it is possible more could be added and updated later on, and I hope it does. It doesn't fail in regards to accessibility, but it doesn't succeed in everything either. In comparison, I'd say it just falls short of what Insomniac and Naughty Dog has done for accessibility with their recent games. Do I recommend this for, play for disabled players? Well, sort of. If there is one or two features you need to play that's there, then yes, I say 100% go for it. If you're hoping for more gameplay mechanics you've seen in other games that help for accessibility, then this might be a way to see if this gets updated later on. Sony has set a precedent that post-launch accessibility updates have been set and have been done for even a year post-launch, and I hope that Gorilla does the same. My personal hope is that at some point, actually, these options could even be added to Zero Dawn so more players can jump into the world Gorilla has created instead of only being able to jump in in story. That is it for my review for Horizon Forbidden West. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you want to see more of my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell notification icon too to see exact, uh, see to be notified when new videos come out. That is it for me. As always, I remain obediently yours. I'll see you in the next video.